Ladies and gentlemen, a great friend of the show, Neil Newborn, mate. It's so good to see you. How are you? Good Thank you for you. coming back. I'm good. I'm a little husky right now. I've been working a lot, uh, despite having a mini break in between. I've been back at work straight away. As you can see, I'm in the wonderful Creative Assembly uh, mocap stage uh, in the UK, doing some work here uh, for the next couple of days, which has been really fun. Uh, I'm good. I'm very busy, <laughs> uh, but incredibly excited and a bit over the moon um, with the response from uh, the communities that have been playing Baldur's Gate 3. And like everybody in the cast and developers at Larian, uh, the directors and crew at, at Pit Stop Productions, where we do the recordings, and all the cast, my fellow cast of 300 people, including the very special six, uh, well, nine really, I guess, um, uh, party members, the hardcore party members. It's been absolutely extraordinary. What a trip and what a, what, a, what a character I've been handed to play over the last four years. It's been amazing. I, I really, I can't stop grinning actually because it, it, it's a bittersweet thing in some ways because I'm obviously I realise that at this stage there's a fair chance, you know, obviously I'm, I'm sort of letting go of the character. I'm not, I'm not really ready to do that yet. So I, I've been having an amazing experience. Um, Why is that? Is it because you had I'm so much fun? Him. He... The Starian was being developed over four years for me, for my work. He's developed obviously longer before I joined uh, as the actor. Uh, the writing is exceptional. The fact that people can choose whatever, almost without any kind of limitation, almost, obviously there's a certain amount of limitation, but it's pretty big. <laughs> you can play the game as you want. You can kill everybody within meeting them. You can ignore them. You can fall in love with them. You can become their friend. You can become their frenemy. Uh, you can do almost anything you can do in a D&D &D campaign for, you know, not tabletop in the game, which also means the character, my character gets to experience every possibility of his multiverse reality it, within that. So I got to play a Starian with every different possibility that you could have his reactions be or his needs and wants could become into obstacle or you could help him or not or hinder him so as an actor it's amazing i get to play like, like thousands of different versions of stories with the character so he develops in every which way possible which is incredibly fulfilling as an actor i got to go so far with the character and, and larian and pitstop were amazing at supporting my choices and allowing me a lot of freedom with character design and how I saw the character, Stephen Rooney, who's the incredible writer for Starian. Um, he and I got to know each other well through the words and also we got to know each other personally. Um, but he followed a bit of my rhythm, I followed his rhythm. We started working symbiotically when he heard the, what he said was unusual takes on his lines. He didn't predict how I was gonna say the lines in some ways. And so therefore he, he found a new rhythm for the writing through, uh, I didn't improvise almost anything because the right, his writing was so good, but he found that oh. what I did with the, the ideas was really interesting. So we, he kind of started tailoring some of the lines towards what I was starting to, to do in terms of my work, uh, which is a really beautiful experience to, as a writer actor uh, combination. You know, it's really nice to experience that. And the directors were stellar. We had a lot of directors on Baldur's Gate 3. I also was a performance voice director on it as well. Um, but there's some incredible directors I work with, people like Kirsty Gilmore, Tilly Steele, uh, Beth Park, uh, Josh Whedon, obviously, Adrian Townsend, um, uh, Bronya, uh, another amazing director, a lot of great performance directors that we worked with, Eliana Baranova, um, really incredible people. It was really, and there's, there's more as well. I can't name everybody. It would take too long. Um, but all of them were, were stellar and fantastic to work with. And I feel very blessed with all this experience. And, and Swen, you... you know, thanks to Swen and <laughs> Jason Latino and Greg um, Lidstone and all those cats, Thierry as well. You know, so many, isn't there? In. There's so many. There's 500 <laughs> people in the in the development side, more or less. Five different yeah. studios all over the world. Uh, 300 actors, uh, like about 20 or 30 directors. It was amazing. Absolutely extraordinary. And yeah. it's great to see the reception going so warmly as well, isn't it, for everyone? It's been cool. Yeah, mm. it's, it's interesting. I've been like checking out like everybody. I don't, I don't try to, I try to spend not as much time on the internet where possible, but I have been checking out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only game I've ever been really, truly nervous of the release, to be honest. It's the only first time. Really? Why is that? Just the, the amount of time or the amount of passion? The amount of, 
the amount of passion and love and the friendships we've all got, we've got real, you know, all these friendships, these little family units have been erupting from the experience. There's so much love in this, um, mm. so much passion in this from everybody from the developer side and the, as well as the cast and crew. Um, you know, we really poured everything into it. Um, I burnt out for one day, only one day in four years, I actually had a burnout physically, vocally as well, ironically. Um, yeah. And I had to take, two, I had to take two days off just to recover and then go back into the studio again because the pace was phenomenal. Um, we, well, I left my blood on the floor on this job, you know, literally actually at one point. Um, and one of the, I also did a lot of the mocap, um, <laughs> body doubling and combat and stunts and creature. Uh, I was consulting as well with my company, Performance Captured Limited, who do workshops as well as production. So we were working with them, teaching the animators how to get into mocap suits. I literally left my blood on the floor on this game, <laughs> uh, as well as having the best time. Oh. Even the day, I, even the day I burnt out, wasn't a bad day. It was just I'd reached the limit of my stamina for that particular period of time, and I had to just reset for a couple of days. Um, everything's been thrown at it. The people have worked the the butts off on this. Not that you need the validation, man, but. Every time I <laughs> no, see I one don't. of your characters, every time I see one of your characters, I don't see my <laughs> mate Neil. I see the character. Yeah, cool. Wicked, I know, so that's, that's exactly a compliment to you, man. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, man. I mean, I, I'm a character actor, and I struggled in the TV and film to some degree because I wasn't often given the opportunity to be a character actor because I have a very strong look. Whereas in games, you can take your face off. And as long as you're playing anything within your ethnic background casting, which is appropriate, um, you can play any role you know, within what is appropriate for you to play. And when you're playing creatures, anybody can play the creatures like dragon and born and tieflings and stuff. You know, you can play anything pretty much. But um, obviously, as long as you're adhering to ethnic background, uh, what is appropriate, and we, it's great that diversity is being represented. This game particularly is very good with, uh, you know, uh, genders, including non-binaries and gender fluids. Uh, sexualities is covered in here. My character's pansexual, for instance, not the the only thing about him, just a strand of a thing. Um, the inclusion is uh, and diversity is very important uh, for Larian, but also important for us. Uh, we have uh, trans actors on it. We have trans crew, um, just as an example of how inclusive this experience has been, mm. how amazing it's been. So this really, we really, this game really means a lot to so many people that put their lives into it. Um, so that's why I was nervous because not because I want it to be good. I don't need the validation of that in that way. It was more like, I just want people to see the love that we yes. poured into this game. Do you know what I mean? But I really okay. appreciate you saying that, you know, I'm a, a, being allowed to be a character actor has been the greatest gift of my career and games gave me animation games gave that to me. Um, I spent a long time crafting and developing characters. I have a lot, I'm very lucky. I, I've been taught a lot of amazing teachers, Charles Foreman, Roberta Wallach, Linda McFist from Charles Foreman Center of Acting. I have a lot of tools. I've spent years learning. And to be able to use almost everything from Commedia dell'arte to animal work, to using friends of mine as inspiration for the character and personality, to pour all of this stuff over four years was incredible. That's absolutely incredible, man. How did your so role... thank you. I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> My pleasure, man. How did your how did your role evolve? Because did you come in as just an actor at the start, and then they're like, "This guy's so good, let's get him to do this, this, this." How did it work? No, not really. It, it was uh, so. I was I was actually shooting. My company did the performance capture side of Final Fantasy sixteen. We did five months in Hungary with Digic Motion. Uh, wow. we, we brought nine actors out. We did all the cinematics, performance capture stuff. It was very cool. And some combat and stunts as well. And during that time, I got the rumor that there was this project going around called Drac... Well, I think I can tell the name because the name doesn't mean anything anymore. It was called Project Drakenfels, which is a made-up name. Yeah. Actually, Drakenfels is a reference to Warhammer. I know that because I'm a fucking geek. <laughs> and I used to play Warhammer roleplay. Drakenfels is a character in a castle in, in so Warhammer. So you probably thought it was a so Warhammer was game. <laughs> Initially, I was like, that's cool. They're doing a Warhammer roleplay thing. And I think, wait a minute. It's a, it's a project. It's a secret name project, which usually covers the real name. So yeah. it can't be Warhammer. That's just too obvious. So I was like, okay, well, let's look at the casting brief. It was like, pick any of these races to play, like Tiefling or Halfling or, or Dwarf or High Elf or Wood Elf or Human or whatever, and then just submit a tape for it. So I looked at it and went, those are D&D &D races. You don't get those in Warhammer. Fucking hell, this is going to be one of three different projects. It's going to be Icewind Dale, or it's going to be, you know, this, whatever, or it's going to be fucking Baldur's Gate. I was like, oh my God, it's Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> Holy shit, it's Baldur's Gate 3. So I was freaking out in 2019 
Because I was like, <laughs> holy shit, I'm making bold escape. <laughs> that was like, nobody told me. I just made a supposition. I'm pretty sure I was right. So I freaked out. I was like, right, there's 12 possible races. I'm going to submit for almost every single race. I, I'll play anything in this game. I will do literally, I'll just be a background dwarf holding a pint of it. I don't care. <laughs> as long as I'm in this game. Yeah. As long as I'm in it. So uh, I submitted like, yeah, I think I submitted like 12 tapes or something crazy. And there uh, wasn't a particular, there was a script for each one, but it was pretty open. There wasn't a definitive character. Yeah. And I think on the on the heart the high elf thing, I just got into a thing with that. I think that's what that's what people liked about that. And I was very ah. lucky the previous year I just done Resident Evil um Resistance, which is like the mini game extra for Resident Evil 3 remake. I worked with Pitstop and Josh Whedon, I think Adrian Townsend was on that as well. I worked with Adrian and Josh on that. So Josh and I already had a rapport going and he remembered me. So when I submitted, he already knew what I was like as an actor. I'm very playful. Um, I like to improvise, not improvise with the script necessarily, but improvise character and just start developing character in a big way. And I'm quite versatile vocally and, and physically as well. So he was the one that picked me for a star in. And I believe that he spoke to Jason Latino, who's the wonderful cinematic lead at Larian. And they okayed me to do a demo. So they brought me in to do a demo session, which actually is used um, for Starian to see, A, could I work with them? Was I okay to work with? Was I not, you know, not psychotic or anything? <laughs> uh, and also my take on the character. And if it went well, it was kind of like a recall audition, kind of. But basically they end up you obviously using that and then the whole ball started rolling. I didn't realize a Starian was a companion. I thought it was just right. a character. So I didn't realize exactly what that would mean until we started working. They said, actually, they, he's a companion. I was like, fuck, <laughs> because that means he's going to be there for the journey. You know, he's not just doing a little bit here and there. He's there the whole way through. And I was would like, that have made you more amazing. nervous if you knew that going into that? Because you're pretty I, I confident, me, you know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty competent. Um, competent. And I also, I'm competent, probably better than confident. I'm, I'm aware of nerves. And I, I'm experienced enough to know how to use nerves positively. But like every actor, we, when we like something, we get nervous because we want to do it. Uh, I think for me, I, I, I think it would have made me want the job more, which isn't yeah. always useful. I think you should want the job. I think you should have passion for doing it in the right way, not in a desperate way. So I think for me as a fanboy of Baldur's Gate and D&D, &D, it was probably a good thing. I didn't. I thought he was a minor character. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> I think I would have probably probably tried to prove that I should be in the. Anyway, um, yeah. luckily they didn't tell me that straight away, which was great. Um, yeah. And then I got to start working, and I started meeting new directors and the crew who were incredible uh, at Pit Stop. They're really great, fantastic crew to work with. We become a family, really. Um, the amazing engineers. Um, I'm not going to name all of them. There's too many. But the audio yeah. engineers, the mocap engineers there as well. Hannah Smith, who's what the producer there, is incredible. She looked after all of us. Just reading, obviously, helming the thing. Um, yeah, it was it was amazing to start into the work. When does the directing part of it come in? <clears throat> so I directed a game called Deliver Us Mars last year, which I also acted in, uh, which did pretty well. For the, the narrative side was great. Um, and I worked with an amazing crew. I've, I've been directing for about four or five years on smaller things and action directing. I was actually direct, action director on a uh, an, an animated film in Japan just at the, at the beginning of the pandemic, funnily enough, for about a month. Um, so I have history of directing anyway. And I think with, they started getting, the workload was so extreme that I just really wanted to get involved on the direction side because I, I know the, the story really well. I know the story of Baldur's Gate 3 really well. I also know D&D &D very well. I felt like I was in a good position to justify asking. And Pit Stop were very sweet um, and they were very supportive. And they, they said, you know, after I asked, they said, yes, you know, absolutely, let's get you in. I did a trial session and it worked out well. I, I love actors anyway. I like working with actors. Um, and I think it just gelled, you know. It was interesting learning how they do things. With the, the pace of which we do the work is incredible. I learned a lot from working with them as well. And that's, they just brought me on and then it just stuck really. So I, I think it was a good experience. And it was great to see also friends of mine directing, uh, people like Fraser Blacksland, he's a wonderful character actor, uh, Keith Higgin, both of them. I worked with Kirsty Gilmore, who's incredible, an incredible director. Um, as I said, Beth Park uh, as well. And I mean, there are many people that are involved in this that are also mates and a lot of friends that are actors as well. 
So I was very lucky to be able to work with friends like Doug Cockle and Jane Perry, oh, legends. And Maggie Robertson, Absolute legends. Maggie, yeah, Maggie legends. Robertson. We got in. You're bringing well. in all the A star. Is... You're like, yep. yeah, man. <laughs> but there's 300 actors. I mean, I've got friends of mine from National Youth, like Alan Turkington, and I, I'm naming people. I please, if I don't name somebody, there's 300 people. A lot of which I know, so please don't forgive Neil, take that guys. Please <laughs> forgive me. We've only got a certain amount of time before we're going to carry on filming <laughs> today. So if I don't yeah. name check you, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm hey, trying with, my best. With yeah. the Starian, I'm curious because you yeah. played a lot of villains, let's call them, and obviously the other I like side to of think it, of them as people, with, as people, uh, yeah. morals. But <laughs> would you call a Starian a an anti-hero? Yes. Yeah, he's an yeah. anti-hero. Is that yeah, different for you? Because I, I don't think you've played many anti-heroes, right? I played a few. Okay. I always view my character. Actually, I always view the villains that I play as, as anti-heroes. I don't really view them. I view them as the heroes in a way. They're yeah. the heroes of their own story. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't judge my characters. I don't. Re- to be honest with you, I don't really put a label on they're just, the characters I play. Yeah, they're just people. Yeah. They're people that do things. Um, the great thing about playing villains is that they, they don't have to carry the story which is number one. They're not Romeo, they're Tybalt Mercutio, you know? Um, <laughs> and they also get, to, they're unshackled usually by moral, social moral compunction. So what society tells you to do, they tend to ignore and it doesn't fit with what they want to do. So they're a lot of fun to play. Um, <laughs> I'm quite, I think I'm quite a pussycat in real life. I'm a bit of a hippie. So for me to play people like that, it's actually quite liberating because I get to experience something that I don't do in my real life. Um, but I, I think I find I have a bit of a knack for it. I think I really like playing with those characters. They're really fun, yeah. and I really enjoy the, the enjoyment of them. Astarian, if I'm looking back on it, he, he is an anti-hero. He can do the right thing, or he can do the self-serving thing. Mm. He can manipulate people, or he can be moved by people. And I think he's flawed, deeply flawed, and wonderful in that, and a beautiful, a beautiful creation. Um, so I think. You know, but he's still one of the hero party, you know? He's still yeah. there trying to save the world. He might be trying to save the world for different purposes than other people, but he's going to save the world with the, with the party, you know, in that way. So he's definitely an anti-hero, I would say, more than a villain. I wouldn't call him a villain as such, no. So talk to me about some of these romance scenes. Um, you know, they <laughs> took, <laughs> took a, you want to hear something the internet though? by storm. I, I, yeah, were you, you the, were you the bear? That? Were you the moat? Did you mocap for the bear? bear did. No, I mocap the bear. Um, no, I swear like I heard me, you say that somewhere. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I directed Dave directed. Jones, directed. who's an amazing actor. I directed Dave Jones in that scene, <laughs> yeah, and we right. didn't know because because the moment that scene, basically uh, that scene, you can use a starian or you could use anybody. So it doesn't have to be a starian for that sex scene. It could be literally anybody, including the player character. Right? It has to be the player character, but the player character can be an origin character or custom. So you don't know who that, and they chose a star in, which I thought was just deeply meta and bizarre. <laughs> but I directed Dave, and then months later, that it's my character that's doing that scene with him. So I, I directed him in that. It was wonderful. Uh, the main party are, are incredibly talented actors. Uh, you know, we've got Jennifer English, who plays Shadowheart, Deborah Wilde, who plays Lysel, Tim Downey, he's extraordinary. Um, there's uh, Samantha Bayart, who plays Karlak, who is incredible in that role. Um, Theo Solomon that we can now talk about also plays um, the new version of Will which has taken a new direction developed in a different direction which is why uh, they got a new actor for it to, to fit into that new direction he's incredible it's his first game I believe as well um, we've also wow. got the you know the supporting characters uh, Tracy Wild plays uh, Jahira who's extraordinary um, that you can see now we've got Matt Mercer legendary Matt Mercer playing Mintz um, and there's some other characters I'm not entirely sure who we can talk about and who we can't, so forgive me if I don't mention them as well. I um, just want to make sure the main party... Sorry, I just want to make sure I mention people I should mention. Um, you poor yeah, thing. Sure. I feel bad for you. There's so many people you don't there's want to There's so miss. many people with so many names. <laughs> uh, you know, I have ADHD, so like trying to keep a lot of information yeah. in my head whilst other ideas are firing off. <laughs> so again, how did, apologies if I miss anybody. How yeah. did Astarian evolve over the four years, do you think? Well, as I said before, the, his, the writer's rhythm I, I tapped into very quickly. Uh, and then I developed my own rhythm of, of it takes on that line. And through that, I used a lot of tools and a lot of different to really explore the character under his circumstances. The needs and wants are very clear. Uh, to be free is his super objective. But that's his ultimate aim, to be free whatever, at whatever cost. 
Um, and with that, it helped me also with the background that they gave me of he was a magistrate, he's a high elf, he's noble class, he's a Baldurian, and he's decadent and hedonistic, and he had this amazing life before he turned into a vampire. All that stuff feeds into the background work and then helps me create habits. He's got a very unique um, base pose, for instance. I think I'll show you, I've got room probably. So he stands, uh, he's unlike any other character. His base pose is this. So a base pose. Did you is come up with that? I, I developed it with the director, with Josh, I think it was, Josh Reed, I think. Yeah. And I believe there was, they wanted it to be slightly different than the regular base pose. I think that was already given by Larry and I can't quite remember. But we definitely talked about it and I definitely felt, well, the one thing that I felt, well, if he's always looking down his nose at people, so his head is always back and open. His arms are open, inviting people in so he can eat them, you know? So we had this idea. I'm pretty sure it was like a combination of things. But also because I was working on his physicality and his musicality as well. You know, I use animal work. He's a cat. He's a black cat. There's a stray that comes into my house called Red. We need him in Red. Um, he's a stray cat. And he's quite feral. It took me three years before I could pick him up and hold him. He's totally cool with me now. Three fucking years. Wow. It took me to allow the stray cat to be cool with me. But he gave me a lot of inspiration about Astarian. Um, there's a great mate of mine called Ruben Kay, who's a very funny comedian in Australia, actually, um, who has uh, some physicalities I really enjoy. So I used a bit of that. There's another friend of mine called Landis, who has some useful uh, uh, things with his habits that I also use. And there's also um, my teacher, Jas Foreman, who I also stole a little bit from as well, vocally. So there's lots of little friends of mine that come in to create this, on top of which he's a theatrical character. He's not camp, he's theatrical, uh, which is a big difference, obviously. So there's a certain enjoyment of all that stuff as well, which I really had fun with. I used Camille Del Arte, for instance, to do some of his movements, uh, very much Alecchino from Camille Del Arte. I went to town on this character. I really pulled out every stop. I had four years to do it as well. It wasn't like a two week shoot where you will start and finish. Like Heisenberg was really over a year, but it was only about three shoots. And you've got to really try and get the character set and then go with it. I had four years and all this writing, all this dialogue, this incredible work to really develop a character, kind of like a TV show, you know? And what point in the process did you, do you think you found him? Where this is the definitive version of him. I've found him. Within the first few weeks were very much the introduction of him, how you meet him. And I think within a couple of weeks, uh, because his character loosened up, because he was started trusting the player a bit more, we, we could allow, because he's quite, he's a little stiff and formal when you first meet him, very dangerous. But then eventually he starts loosening up and his voice starts loosening a bit and his mannerisms start flowing like crazy. So that was I all on that purpose? Was, kind of, it was a happy accident. It was right. a happy accident. We started off with the arc, with the with the, the foundation of him, the core of him, and then that suddenly started growing into those things. And actually, it makes sense in the story because he starts loosening up with the play, and so you start getting a bit more of a flowy version of him because he's more comfortable and he's more stable. He feels like he's more in control and he's safer in a way, you know. Yeah. Um, so it was a happy accident that he developed in that way, and it makes sense when you play the game. It actually makes sense, which is. Thank God. <laughs> thank, thank, thank fuck. Otherwise, it would have been a problem. <laughs> I've uh, we've spoken before in our last chat about method acting. Is there is there a correlation yeah. with character work that you do and and method acting? And I'm a I'm a method actor. I'm also a Yat Malgrim uh, student. I'm also uh, a community <laughs> latte lover. Um, I, I do everything. I've I've tried every tool that I, I know of, with a few exceptions. Uh, there are some big exceptions I haven't tried yet. So I'm very lucky that I have a massive tool set to come from. My first hardcore training was method. I definitely use a lot of method techniques in filling out the life of the character, uh, playing with the character. I definitely go, in, I go into studio with my, I've been in studio quite a few times with Giles uh, to work on characters. Isaac Johansson from um, Deliver Us Mars, I, unlocked with Giles specifically to find uh, that character's rhythm because I was having a bit of a hard time with him initially and then I found him. So, uh, yeah, I, method acting is a misunderstood thing, I think. It doesn't I... mean you have to walk around as a character being no. horrible to people because you play a villain. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it that's an excuse. You fill out, 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It is yeah. an excuse. I don't agree with quite a lot of the stories you hear of people being bastards on the set. Oh, That's because ridiculous. I'm yeah. It's like, fuck off, man. Just do it in your own time. <laughs> so for me, you know, there's a lot of great method tools I use. That I still use on a regular basis. Um, yeah. But really for me, like, you know, actors should train, even if it's not a traditional drama school, but you, you do courses all the time. You learn with teachers, you have teachers and mentors. That's fine. It just needs to be happening all the time. It takes years. I've trained for 15 years. I still go back into class whenever I, if I can, which has not been very recently, but I still use the studio method and ideology. I still have my mentors to talk to and to train with. Um, it's important. And uh, so, yeah, method was, method, is, I've used a lot of methods in, in the, my work generally. Um, you... I also use musicality. I have a Spotify list, which I use to, for the character and the scene work as well. I'm very excited, man, to continue. Sorry, Dan. I feel like my energy is like, yeah, let's talk about you. Know, I'm really up. I love it, man. It's, it's been awesome. I yeah, absolutely love your passion, man. It, it makes my oh, job this easy. Project, this project has, oh. been, has been extraordinary. It's been absolutely extraordinary. I've heard yeah. you say you've never had a bad day in the <laughs> doing performance capture, right? But you have challenging a, days. Never, yeah, what were one of those challenging day. days on Boulder's Gate mm -hmm. 3? I'm curious physical burnout i yeah. had i think I, I think it was more than once i think it was twice maybe maybe twice in four years i had and doing hundreds of hours in the volume uh and the volume is quite small where we shoot and it's it's pretty you know it's pretty much within a meter meter that's why that's the movement you're not moving very much but I, and you're doing hundreds of lines a session hundreds i'm also doing the mocap in, um, I was also doing the mocap stuff in the mocap stage, which is body movement, which is more traditional mocap stuff that we were doing. Body doubling for other actors that couldn't physically get to the UK. Um, I was doing a lot of that as well. Um, I had physical burnout when my voice went and my body went, and I just was just doing not great work. Not because I wasn't passionate or focused or prepared, just because my body just went... Pfft. <laughs> we're not doing that anymore dan <laughs> it was like you know has so, that ever happened to you so before I, on a project mm, it's ha it usually happens after big projects i usually crash it for about a week or so afterwards but this happened uh, during yeah this i think is the i think is the very first time it happened during mm -hmm. a project actually yeah that's true i'm going to try and avoid details it's kind of disgusting but in Japan, um, I had been rolling from one job to another for about like, two years, literally traveling from um, America to Hungary to Japan to India, all over the place continually for about two years with very little, little breaks in between. Yeah. Uh, my body did give up on me. Uh, let's just say that keeping food in the stomach was quite difficult <laughs> for about two week period at the two Damn, weeks during man. shoot. Yeah. I was going to the bathroom Jeez. every like 10 times a day. Uh, no more discussion. Sorry about the details. Yeah. No, but I was no, still filming. I was filming continually through that period. So I didn't stop filming. Fuck so me. my body definitely gave up. We had fatigue, severe fatigue. And this is the start of the pandemic. So I freaked out. I thought, oh, it's COVID. You know, cause we didn't know what COVID was at that point. I went to the doctor. He went, you're fatigued? He went, no, I'm not. I'm getting at least five hours a night. I feel great. <laughs> he went, no, no, your body is fatigued. Your body is giving up on you. <laughs> so, so Sorry, I should have laughed at your you know, no, disintegration. No, I think it was, hyster I thought it was hysterical when he told me. I think it was ridiculous. So, uh, <laughs> But this is the first time I've ever had to cut a session short. Yeah, yeah, it was the first time. Did you feel bad and having to do bad. that? Yeah, I felt awful. Yeah. I felt awful for, I didn't want to waste people's time. Yeah. I felt bad. The director was amazing. Luckily, it was my friend, Kirsty Gilmore, who's an exceptional director anyway, and she's hugely supportive. Uh, and the crew were great as well. I, think, uh, um, I can't remember who the crew was that day. The, the, I remember the, the crew being very <laughs> understanding as well. Um, but I just felt bad because I was like, I'm wasting your time. And, you know, it's just awful. I felt lousy for having to go home early and not be able to finish the session and the work wasn't where I wanted it to be but like I said pit stop and directors and, and Larian as well are so understanding and supportive that even though I felt awful and bad they told me you need to go you're not we're canceling your session for two days rest sleep you know look after yourself yeah and so I did that and within two days I was back into it it was fine yeah yeah it reminds me of a, a scene in the game that I've seen where you're vomiting, and it sounds so realistic, Neil. It sounds like you actually <laughs> vomited, man. I'm, I'm yeah. worried. I definitely retched, definitely retched up a little bit. So yeah, yeah. Sometimes you go a bit far, but it's it's all manageable. It's fun. 
So what do you want to say to the Boulder Skate fans um, as we wrap up? Because I know you're busy. We, we are going to do another one, hopefully, um, once I'm back from Holland, once everyone's <coughs> been able to enjoy the yeah. game. And we can and once I can spoilers. talk about some of the, exactly. some of the spoilers I, I'm not going to talk about right now. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Really. Um, is there anything you want to say to these fans that have come out and or people that maybe haven't played the game and maybe think, you know, they should give it a crack? Yeah, sure. Yeah. This is one of the truest. I, I personally believe this is about as close to playing uh, a game version of a tabletop D&D campaign that you'll ever find. Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 are extraordinary games. They're amazing. They still hold up today. But I think Baldur's Gate 3 is the closest you'll ever find to playing an actual live version of D&D. Um, if you haven't played the game, if you have played the game, I just want to on, um, I'm speaking on behalf of all the cast as well, cause I know how they feel the amount of love and support and generosity and interest and joy that the community have already started talking about and the artwork for all the characters and stuff has been overwhelming and has touched all of us. We're just so thrilled that you have enjoyed our story. And, and obviously it's Larian's story, you know, we're, we're a part of that. And we're just overjoyed that you have, have loved Sven's vision and our work and we feel really embraced and seen by you so thank you so 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 much for all the sweet things and, and the positive messages and uh the love and joy you have for our work because it, it's been it's been um it's actually quite emotional <laughs> yeah. Man, it's actually, uh, sorry yeah it's actually, uh, it's actually a bit overwhelming you know in a really good way sorry i'm a bit um <laughs> no man uh, no look i yeah. really respect that and i, I was going to say what is it like you know <laughs> The last time you do a session for this character after so many years, oh, man, how do you I'm let go? Really <laughs> Addy, <laughs> honestly, I, I... it was yeah, it was pretty heavy. It was um, I haven't really let go. I think is the yeah. thing. The character's still very much with me. Maybe uh, you never will. His, I don't know. Part of his, I've actually assimilated part of his laugh. By you have, yeah, I, you yeah, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> I do. I do like a high pitched giggle when I feel incredibly mischievous. <laughs> where I've done something particularly naughty, that like in a good way, like yeah. not not off, not not bad, just a little yeah, bit. Like yeah. you shouldn't really do it. Yeah. You know, Cheeky, I have this yeah. high pitched, this high pitched giggle. I have now. I did it. I started doing it, and it's it's a part of me, unfortunately. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't think I'll ever quite let go of him. But I, I like the fact that that fans of the game and the character are now creating their own head canon and their own ideas about stories and stuff. And I think it's wicked. I think it's really cool. I'd love to see people put a star in their campaign. You know, if they play it for real, that'd be really nice. Uh, who knows? Maybe we get to do something else again with the character. I'd love to. Uh, I, you know what I'd love to, more than anything else, I would love to play a star in live action. That's what I'd love to do. I would love to see him in a, in a D&D film or something and play him for realsies. Well, I know you can uh, do listen, it. Sorry. Not playing for realsies. I played him for real in the game. I mean, play him for live action realsies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd love to do that. That'd be really cool. I look like the guy a little bit. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe a cosplay, <laughs> hey? I'm, that's my closest thing. I'm going to cosplay him. I'm, I've decided I need to find somebody to make something appropriate for him, but I'm, I'm going to try and cosplay him, yeah, because the only time I've ever cosplayed, never done it, never done it before, but I think it's appropriate this time. <laughs> two, two more and I'll let you go. What do you want people <laughs> no to take worries. away from this character, mate? I'm curious. One thing I would say is if you want to play him as an origin, play him as a, a companion first and then play him as an origin character because there's a lot more that comes out talking to him as companion because you're not immediately, he's not immediately accessible. So first and foremost, play him as a companion and then if you want to play him as an origin, play him as an origin. Um, I hope you just come away with a sense of the fun of the story of him um, and the, I hope he touch. I hope the story in my performance touches the player in in terms of his journey, because uh, when I say I put a lot of my you know a lot of my work into this, and I, a lot of my passion into this, I'm not kidding. This character's journey has been absolutely extraordinary, and I can't thank Swen and Larry and, and Pitstop and Josh Whedon and, and Jason Martino and all those kind of people and Steve Rooney, the writer, enough to say thank you so much for giving me this. Uh, a fucking hell, mate. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> for giving me this character because it's allowed me the totality of an acting experience in a project sustained over four years. I've made friendships. I've had fun. I've. It's allowed me to sustain myself as an actor. And um, honestly, man, you're gonna get me one well enough, man, it's for probably, the first time. <laughs> Sorry, it's been one of the, the best games, gifts, and characters uh. I've ever played. 
really has. And... <laughs> well, we're um, going to have to do this again. This on camera, Dan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we're not recording. Don't worry, mate. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have good. to do this again so we can get into some spoilers. And I know it's a mammoth Definitely. game. We're talking, what, 180 yeah. hours of cutscenes? Prob- it's, it's, no, it's, I think it's more than that. It's something, yeah, something like that in cutscenes, maybe more. I think it takes yeah. you about 100 games to play, 100 hours to play the game fully, yeah. 200 to see everything. And it's something yeah. like, yeah, well, 180 hours of cinematics minimum, maybe more. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Have yeah. you gotten to not play everybody, it? Not everybody's going to see everything, by the way. It's not supposed, you're not supposed to. No, no, of course. You're supposed it's to like Detroit training. in a way, yeah. 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 Like Detroit in the way, yeah. Um, I haven't started playing it yet. No, I played a little bit of EA just because I need to understand the mechanics and everything. But I'm going to do a complete playthrough on my Twitch channel. Yeah, I mean, start to finish. Yeah, it's going to take me years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Right. That's going to take you a while. Did you, did you end up beating Village in the end? I did. Yeah, it was the yeah. first Resident Evil game I ever finished. It's extraordinary. <laughs> I always gave up. <laughs> Before right. we go, mate, can we get a quicker Starian to wrap this one up? Yes, I can. I can, I can use something. My voice is a bit croaky, so it's yeah. going to be a bit low register. That's right. <clears throat> oh, hello. My name's Astarian, and you're watching Dad Allen. Gather your party and venture for Starlings. Is that okay? Thank you, Neil. I look forward to so chatting to you soon, brother. Today, no, no, all worry. good, mate. Thank you so much for that chat. I really much appreciate love, it, brother. Man. Much love, brother. No Take care.